Welcome back to another episode of Raising the Curtain, a Bloomington Normal Theater podcast with Ashley Raylin. Today we will be interviewing Pamela Morgan. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Raising the Curtain. Today I am here with local playwright Pamela Morgan. How are you? I'm good. Nice to be here. I know. I'm excited to have you. We've been doing a lot of history of theaters and meeting with directors, so I think talking to you is going to be a really cool perspective for a lot of people. So can you just start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Who's Pamela and how'd you get into theater? Sure. Um, So I am a current local here. I've been uh, in Bloomington Normal area for about seven years now, and I grew up on the south side of Chicago. Um, I started in theater shortly after high school. My high school did not have a theater program, and uh, it was a... um, a smart kids school as the <laughs> as my friends used to always tease us so they didn't do things like arts which was weird interesting but yeah um Kanye West was in my graduating class so <laughs> wow that's really cool yes. she, well, all right hey um, Kanye <laughs> yeah so uh so I got into theater in college and um started I've always been a writer and so I started writing plays mostly around people I knew Right, like I had a theater group or groups mm-hmm. of people that acted, so I was like, "Oh, I'll write a play for these people," mm-hmm. um, and I did that through most of my twenties. And then um, my writing kind of evolved into other fields, and I wrote other things. And then the pandemic hit, and I really wanted a way to reconnect with people. And I feel like theater is a really great way to reconnect and to connect and to collaborate. And so I wrote um, a COVID Christmas Carol. And then yes. that kind of uh, kept me on the writing plays, and I have continued writing plays since then. So, uh, and went went to school for my um, master's in fine arts in creative writing um, at Augsburg University, which I just graduated in August. So yes, yay. and uh, yeah, and so I've just been writing since. That's awesome. I was going to say I knew you were in the program and that you had recently graduated, but I wasn't sure when. Now, COVID Christmas Carol. Let's go back to that just a little bit. That was produced with Nomad Theater. Correct. Okay. Yes. Have you worked with any of the other local theaters or has most of your stuff been with Nomad? Uh, so most of my stuff was has been with Nomad um, and then recently with Heartland Community Theater. Yes. Um, I was a part of a, a, the, pl- a, the play is the thing? A play? I think it's the, the play is the, the thing. thing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's when, hard to say. <laughs> it is. When I was interviewing Reese and Gail for this, they kept referencing it and I'm like, I'm just going to have you guys say it because yeah. I'm going to botch it. <laughs> it's not that hard. But it, it's hard to say yes, it. Yes, exactly. And that was a play. It was kind of like, was it a staged reading? Yes. Okay. So it was, it's what's called a development program. It's, this is done a lot with um, new plays. Mm-hmm. Almost all new plays at some point have to have development because, you know, when you're a playwright, um, you are writing alone, right? Uh, and until there are actors reading the roles, a director who's looking at it for the overall view and the creative, um, it's not a play, right? Like it's it's not like a book, it's not like mm-hmm. a novel, It's it needs the collaboration. And so ev- almost every play goes through that development process. There's not many theaters who actually actively seek new playwrights and new plays to develop them. Right, and that is definitely something that Heartland and Nomad are very known for, yes. especially workshopping and doing kind of, I don't want to use the word avant-garde, but it's not, you know, a script that we can go pull out of a library. It's, they do a lot of that workshopping, which I think is fantastic for what they're doing. Um, so the play's the thing that was with Linda Reddick, Christy Zimmerman, and Jen Malloy, correct? correct? Yes, directed by Reese. Directed by Reese. I can't believe I got all those names right. Yeah, I'm I don't even too. I'm a, impressed. I don't even have a script <laughs> in front of me. So what was that experience like for you? What did you get out of it? And how do you think it helped improve the show that we were workshopping? Yeah, so um, I think it was a little different for me because I'm local. Mm-hmm. I was the first, I'm, I'm the first local playwright who has been invited to be a part of it. Yes, they did mention that. Right. And so I asked, because the play that I was having done load bearing walls I had I wrote this past April and I'd never even heard it read so I knew it needed revisions even before it hit a development program so I asked Reese like is it possible that I can do a reading like I can hear the actors read it and then I can make some major revisions before we move into the the Mm week-long workshop Um, so that was that helped even just having the reading helped a lot 
um, in terms of seeing places that were pacing was wrong or what was kind of missing um, in, in terms of scenes because it's, it's a very contemporary piece and so it moves in and out through time. Um, and so I knew there were some gaps in terms of the continuity of the play and in terms of uh, the character relationships. So that helped and then the week long process, I mean, I just love that. I could do that for yeah. the rest of my life. Even my own plays, anybody else's play, I just love that. Yeah. That being there in that space and, you know, creative and, and it's something new. Like you said, it's not dead white men. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Plays by dead white men. Yeah. Um, that should be like a band name or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> dead white men. <laughs> the dead white men. Um, <laughs> it's, it's just so interesting because it's never been done, right? So like yeah. these actors, this is the first time they're developing these roles. This is the first time these words are being heard. It's, I don't know, there's something very exciting about it. And so, and then at the end, the last day they invited two responders, I think we're calling them respondents, sure. which I liked. I liked that a lot. Everyone was like, how did you feel about it? I was like, I loved it. Because they, I mean, they had a, a lot of nice things to say, but a lot of very helpful things. Mm -hmm. um, and I wish I could remember their names. There were, they were both from um, Illinois, University of Illinois in Springfield. Clearly good at what, what they're doing. What they're doing yeah. and responding to new plays, right? Yeah. Not everybody's good at working with new plays. It, it's mm -hmm. not everybody's talent. And so they were able to give me some very specific um, feedback on next steps, on, on specific things that I'm missing that I can improve mm -hmm. to take it to the next level, which is the goal. Yeah, absolutely. So we've worked together previously mm -hmm. um, through Nom Nomad. We did your play Gloria Mundi, um, which I directed and starred Bryson Kramer, Cameron Pride, and Kayla Pulliam. Damn, you are so good. I'm, I'm right. <laughs> Kayla Pulliam Mendoza. Let me get her full name in there. Um, Kayla Joe. Kayla Joe. Pulliam, Pulliam Mendoza. Mendoza. <laughs> um, obviously, with Nomad Theater, with the help of Connie Blake, Kristen Monson, and of course, Kayla's husband was a great help to us, Vic. Oh, yes. Um, but we had a lot of fun. When we took on that, when I took on that show, it had already gone through a development workshop that other actors had come in and worked and all of that. But then even during our process with it, I feel like you and me were texting every day saying, yes. hey, we have a question about this right. line. And it sucked because I had COVID too. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be there watching so I could like make changes and, you know, and, and that was really hard, but you were wonderful we with had like all those, sending videos yeah. and yeah. It's like, here's this page to this page. We have a question on right. line four <laughs> yeah. on page 20. But that was a really good experience and we got to take that to the Indianapolis Fringe Festival which was so fun. I had never done anything like that. And I just want to touch on one thing you had said of you really like working with new works and kind of being able to mold it and shape it. Working with you for me was a really good learning experience because I am known for taking, you know, really big name musicals and kind uh -oh. of doing something funky with it. Oh, yeah. So, um, cause like, I love to do when I direct, I love to do that too. It's like, I need something new. Yeah. But I, I will never claim to be a writer. I, I think I am really well-rounded in the field of theater. Writing is not one of those things. <laughs> Don't say never. Right. <laughs> and I always say my thing with casting specifically is taking what a playwright creates just in words and being able to put a face and mannerisms and emotions. That's what's super fascinating to me. So being able to create something completely from the ground up I was, wonder was a wonderful experience for me. Yeah. I, I, that was my that was my tangent. <laughs> well, there, you, I and guess. you did a great job Thank with it. You. I mean, you did because you a lot you fun. saw things that then led me in in when I because I that that play. Let me see if I can get words out. That play, Gloria Mundi, uh, was accepted to a development program yes. after that in Ohio in Mansfield, Ohio, with Renaissance Theater, and so things that you pulled out like in the in the production mm -hmm. of it. Uh, I was able to like take like oh this inspired and and I added like little flashback scenes yeah. to make it a more full length play. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I love the idea of a flashback and I think I think flashbacks for that show are really good. Um, and it almost kind of makes you feel more for Gloria and Jody. I'm sure not reading yeah. it, but having that relationship with them. And then did you also do a recent show with Kayla? It was I I want to say oh the movie. Yeah, a yeah, film. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. So, um, there is a project, and I'm drawing a blank on the name of the project right now, but it is about um, 
It's for uh, Women's History Month. Mm -hmm. And um, so a year ago, they had put out a call for um, plays, poems, stories about um, like sexual assault, sexual abuse. Okay. And I have this play that I had written that is, um, it's from the perspective of Cinderella, who is, uh, and I'm going to use the term on trial uh, for accusing Prince Charming of harassment, stalking, and sexual assault. And it's just her and a lawyer, right? Um, And it kind of flips the whole fairy tale on its on its head we love that yes and but in a kind of funny way yeah right um and so i when i wrote it i wrote it prior and i submitted it last year and uh and it's a local group it's a local woman that organizes it and again i wish i could think of the name of what the program was i feel terrible but um and it's done every year but she asked again if i would like to submit it and i was like well since i have some time I'd really like to film this, like Mm -hmm. make it like, instead of just two people sitting at a table staged reading, I would like to, you know, so uh, I got Kayla and um, Dave. Dave Crustle. Uh Uh-huh. And it was directed, um, oh my God, I'm drawing a blank on names. I can't think today. Um, (laughs) Sonowich Miata Nuat. Nuat, yes. (laughs) <laughs> yes. I didn't forget him. But it, it was a wonderful experience mm-hmm. and turned out really well. I loved it. We, we recorded it over at the McLean County History Museum in right. their courtroom, which was so cool. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. Being able to experience that. And then tell me a little bit about COVID Christmas Carol. I remember like seeing it yeah. um, when it was happening. But let's just talk a little bit about that since it was, you know, that was like the start of it all. The start of it yeah. all, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I, I wanted to write a play. Well, I I wanted to write something uh, to bring actors together, right. uh, but over Zoom. So I figured, well, it has to be Zoom-related. And, you know, I was thinking about, well, what can I write that is not going to cost me money to write? <laughs> right? Honestly, and yeah. Christmas Carol was, yeah. you know, the most appropriate one. So I it's totally modern. Um, obviously takes place during COVID mm-hmm. uh, and Scrooge and all the, you know, the, the familiar beloved characters are a part of it, but they're all, all the, the spirits are changed. Um, so it's, uh, it's Alexa is the, the ghost of Christmas past. past. Um, so she takes him through the computer and it's, she's just a voice. Very cool. Um, and that, because he keeps talking, like he, yeah. he uses, he's a modern Scrooge, right? Um, and then... It is a, she was inspired by, um, well, I shouldn't say she, because I, I specifically wrote the character to be any gender gotcha. uh, or genderless, but um, I'm not sure if you ever watched, it's, a, it's about, they, they find uh, like serial killers. It's a oh. fictional TV show, but they have a woman who like sits, she's like the, the operation, you oh, know. Oh, like NCIS with like Garcia? Not NCIS, but yes, Garcia. Yeah, the, the yeah. blonde that's yes. always with Shamar Moore. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. So Garcia, in, completely inspired by her. Yes, okay. yes, yeah. I know so, exactly. Who you're like when about. I the the character, it's her voice, right? So mm-hmm. she's she's the second ghost. Criminal Minds. Thank you, thank you. I'm like I know it's not NCIS. <laughs> Criminal Minds. Um, oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. So totally inspired by her. Um, and then the third is um, that group of hackers, um, anonymous. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's anonymous face. And then I wrote it like where the ghost appears in the frame with Scrooge. So then we had to cast a Scrooge that had a wife that could wear the mask, right? Oh. Yeah, because it like she starts on her own screen yeah. and then like appears Scrooge. with Scrooge and then takes Scrooge, like scrolls through his computer. Yeah. It was intended to be pre recorded, right? Like mm-hmm. to be re- like performed, recorded, and cut so that all of this could happen. Mm-hmm. And Nomad did it live. That, that's incredible. I mean, blew my mind. Yeah. Blew my mind the job they did with it. It was yeah. amazing. How many people were in that show? Oh, God. Um, at least 15, I think. Okay. It was I, a big cast. I was saying, I know well, was, Christmas Carol is always a big right, cast. Right, absolutely. And the only reason I ask that is because it, just from working with you, it seems like most of your cast usually tend Smaller. to go like three to four to five yeah. people maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so especially with that kind of being the comeback and yeah. doing such a big cast, but at least, you know, we had a bit of a plot we could work with and yeah. then instead of, you know, coming up with something completely from scratch. Right. But yeah, I remember watching it and it was, I was very impressed by it. I, I'm shocked they did it live, live? and in per- like <laughs> real time. Yeah. I, it was 
so incredible yeah. to see. And then I also just want to touch on, you had a children's book recently come out. I did, yes. I'm also a picture book writer. So uh, if there's any agents out there, <laughs> <laughs> I am I am querying for an agent. Um, yeah, I, I wrote a book, uh, Simply Sky is the name of the book. Mm-hmm. And I my oldest is non-binary. Um, and they started transitioning when they were like five or six years mm-hmm. old. So many, many years ago. And at that time, there was it wasn't a thing. Right. There the word, word didn't word exist. Didn't, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, I have a lot of nieces and nephews and our family had so many questions. What's going on? What is this? How, you know, so I wrote this story about a child who uses their doll, Sky, to sort of explore gender. Um, and, the, and the whole concept being that all children should have the opportunity to explore gender, right? And so uh, I wrote this book back just then for my nieces and nephews to share, like, here's an explanation. And then that was it, and put it away. Um, And then over the the pandemic, my oldest, who at the time identified as male Mm -hmm. for most of their their life, Mm -hmm. um, then started exploring their gender again and realized they were non-binary. And I was like, oh, my God, do you remember that story? That story was, like, pretty much non-binary. There was no gender. And they're like, what are you talking about? So I pulled it out, and I read it to them. And they're like, you need to publish this. Other kids need this story. Mm -hmm. So I looked for a publisher and found one. And uh, I love writing children's books. I've written, like, nine more, none published yet. Uh, I'm hoping to find an agent this time. So, yeah. yeah. And, I mean, not to get too political, but especially with the world we're living in, not saying believing one way is wrong or right, but just having the education and the resources, I think is wonderful to have. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's for children to be themselves, right? Yeah. Like that's what we want right. in life is to be seen, mm-hmm. to be understood and to have the freedom to like make our own choices mm-hmm. and have our own autonomy. And that's kind of what the book is about and what the book sort of celebrates is like this child is sort of, you know, different from other children and the parents support that. Right. And that's, yeah. That's, that's epic. Yeah. Um, where can we purchase this book? Any bookstore. Um, Any bookstore. But absolutely go over to Bob's Bay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Support yeah. local. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So Simply Sky? Simply Sky. Simply Sky. Bob's Bay in any bookstore. I feel yeah. like I should be doing an ad right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's also at the library, too. It's so also at the library. Out at the library. There we go. So I kind of want to, you know, let's backtrack a little bit into theater here. Can you kind of talk a little bit about your writing process? Um, Obviously, with the children's book, you had something you could relate to that you were writing for your family. But how how do you kind of start? Yeah. So um, I think I always try to write what I know Um, or at the very least put myself into the situations Mm -hmm. or characters in some way. I'm often inspired by things. And I mean, I feel like most writers will tell you this, like once you start looking actively for ideas, they start finding you, Mm -hmm. right? And so like a poem is what inspired Gloria Mundi. My father's death also inspired it, but but that was sort of the gateway into it, right? Um, The load-bearing walls was inspired by a Swedish Supreme Court case. Um, and, and that led me down a rabbit hole of self-discovery and discovery about the story that was going on. Um, and it, that the whole story is, is fictional, but it's inspired by that Supreme Court case. Um, so I guess th- my process always begins with an idea, right? right. Like uh, either I have actors <laughs> or I have an idea and I, gotcha. and I write from there. And then um, I'm, I am faster than most writers. I tend to write very quickly. Um, but my first drafts are always trash and garbage. And they should be. Right. Like anyone it, who's out there writing. <laughs> get all the ideas out. Your, your first we... trash, your first trash, your first draft <laughs> is you telling yourself the story. Mm-hmm. Right? And then once you know the story, then you can go back and start making revisions. And with plays, it's a little bit different than with other kind of writing because mm-hmm. you, um, I like to get actors involved. So usually I, I will write it in my first draft, and then I will totally revise that mm-hmm. maybe twice or three times. Then I have like, a, like people I know read it, <laughs> give me the feedback. Uh, then I make another revision, and then I, I involve actors um, because you have to hear it, mm-hmm. right? Like, like theater, playwriting, unlike other uh, writing arts, is three-dimensional 
it, it's very similar to picture book writing mm -hmm. where you have the book and the pictures and it's you know you can move the book around and turn the pages it's three dimensional yeah. um except you have actors mm -hmm. <laughs> right right and so yeah, uh face. so typically that i mean and i will say it like unlike with other forms of writing the actors are also a part of my writing mm -hmm. process so that makes sense um I know there was, this was a while ago. It might have been earlier this year. I came and did a reading for you for a show. Yes, was you that, did. Was that your thesis? That, that was my thesis play. Okay. Yes. Was, <laughs> and you were amazing. Thank you. Yeah, it was, I'm trying to think. I glory think to the father. That was it. I knew yeah. it was something glory, but I'm like, it's not Gloria. I don't know. Something right. like that. <laughs> Which that's going into development uh, with a group in Florida. Oh, okay. Next, uh, in March, I'll that's be going awesome. to Florida. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was just, you know. I think Connie Blick might have texted me and said, hey, we had a person back out. Can you come read this play for Pamela? <laughs> sure. Sure. <right? laughs> Why not? So, I yeah. don't know. But, but it was a good time. Um, any tips or tricks that you can give to maybe anyone interested in writing and they just haven't maybe found their footing for it yet? Yeah, I would say don't be afraid. Get a group. Mm -hmm. Get get accountability partners um, find a mentor, like if you know someone who's local that writes. Uh, I mean, I, I have a writing group every Thursday that I write. I have online writing groups mm -hmm. where we like write adjacent with each other. Um, I have I have critique groups that I'm a part of. Um, I really think like they're your people and they, are, they will keep you inspired. Mm -hmm. um, but don't be afraid, just do it. I mean, I think anybody can write. I think everybody should write. So <laughs> well, I think I just got called out. Right, all right. <laughs> So do you have anything upcoming that you'd like to share or can share? Uh, well, I have um, a play of mine was just adapted into a short film. So mm -hmm. that should be coming out soon. I think they just recorded at the beginning of this month in Nashville. Um, that is called um, uh, blanking on <laughs> words. Um, Santa got ran over. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's fun. That's coming out at some point early this year. And then I have the uh, development going on mm -hmm. um, in March in Florida. And that's for Glory to the Father. And then I have a short play that's going on in Australia in, Ju in January. How cool is that? You're yeah. like all international <laughs> now. And then I know um, we kind of mentioned this. You are working very closely with Nomad. Um, I am going to be doing an interview here soon with Kristen and Connie, and they're going to be giving us all this exciting new information yes. that Nomad's going to be doing. I know they've been kind of silent for a little while, but Nomad's going to come back with a bang. I'm real confident yeah, well, in it. Yeah, you're involved too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, so. I am. I remember, but I always, I don't forget, right. but it's like. <laughs> like you remember, but you forget. Yes. Exactly. So, uh, and I, I won't go into too much to what is going to be coming up first, because mm -hmm. I know Connie and um, Kristen are kind of, we've sort of divided and conquered. Sure. Um, so Ariel and I are working on the Women's History Month, which we have brought you into mm -hmm. for directing. And it's, I, I'm kind of excited about it. I'm it's, pumped. Yeah. Because it's going to be a little different. Um, it's going to be at the library. Mm -hmm. It's going to be sort of live theater, organic, um, similar to the cemetery walks in some ways. Um, but the difference will be that people can just walk around and, and overhear things as they go. Um, it's not like a tour. Right. And uh, and then we're hoping part of the plan is for the writers to meet the actors before they go off and write these monologues or scenes mm -hmm. to sort of have it like a living, breathing thing, um, taking inspiration from what the actors are strongest with right. or, or, or women, historical women that mm -hmm. they want to write about. So. Yeah, exactly. it's, it's pretty exciting. It'll be good. So, yeah, keep your ears and eyes out for that because I know we've been already discussing possible audition dates yep. and everything <laughs> like that. There is just so much that happens. Surprisingly, no shows, like, really go on during the winter time frame, but it's like everyone is auditioning. Everyone is oh, workshopping. Yeah. Uh, I know, like, Community Players has their show that goes on in January, but everything else is just, like, gearing up for this March, April, May season so there's gonna be a lot of great stuff coming up that i'm super excited for um and i'm also been i haven't directed anything since jesus christ superstar and that's which been was over, fantastic thank you <laughs> <laughs> which has been over a year so i'm over here like the cat at the bathroom door like let's go i gotta direct something so when you messaged me i was like yes please and you know historic yeah. women who doesn't want to get well, there yes who doesn't exactly. want to be involved with that exactly um so yeah Anything else you would like to add, Pamela, before we let you go? No, this has been wonderful being here. And I just, I love the whole idea of your podcast. Thank you. We're, yeah. we're very excited about it. Um, and yeah, I mean, 
keep a lookout for all of Pamela's stuff, y'all. She's pretty cool to work with, if uh-huh. I say so. Thank you. Yeah. So you can learn a lot from her. So, but thank all right, you. Thank, thank you so much, Pamela. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela. Looking forward to your next project. Next episode will air on December 27th with cast members of Community Players Theater production of 12 Angry Jurors, Richard Bergauer, and Mia Carrillo. Happy holidays, and thank you for listening to Raising the Curtain with Ashley Ray Lynn. Follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. Thanks again for listening, and as always, support live local theater.